So once you have downloaded the workshop repository, please go into the workshop repository and click on our workshop.r project. So it's gonna take a while to open. So when you've opened it, uh, depending on how you set your R Studio, it might be on the left or the right side, but please go to files and go to, uh, you, you will probably be in the workshop page um, directory. Please scroll all the way down to handouts and click on to visualize. You're gonna work with, um, this data to uh, this workshop material today. So 02 visualize.rmd. Once you've opened that up, click, uh, look at the top. There is a neat button uh, over here. Please click on a neat button. So it's gonna create the annotated output or the final document that we will create today. So right now it's gonna create the workshop workbook or template without the exercises completed but it will have all the notes and the examples inside it's going to take a while because there are lots of graphs that we're going to um, go through today with all these additional steps so while this is running i'm going to um, introduce you a little bit about rmb so it's called R Markdown. It's a nice document where you can create annotated output. For example, if you are doing it for your thesis, you can do that. Um, if you're doing brainstorming for your analysis or project, you can also use R Markdown to write a code. And then underneath the code, you can write some um, thought processes. So this is the workbook we'll be going through today. You can follow this workbook or follow the R code itself. Um, there will be best practices that I will think they I think they are uh, at least in my case uh, tips for um, run, um, pro R programming, and then the purple box uh, is an exercise you will be completing throughout the workshop, and the blue box are hints for you to complete the exercises. So the first thing we want to do is to set our data plan. We want to uh, import all the packages first. So if you look at our setup on line 50, there is a triangular shape, triangle shape on the right. It's called run current chunk. What it does is to run the current chunk inside the R code here. So we want to set all this up before we do anything else. So once that is done, it's going to be green. And then we can run the next line to import all the packages that we will be using today. So once that is done, we will start with loading our data. Right now the data is empty, the environment is empty because we have not loaded any data yet. So our data that we will work with is located inside the data directory. We are working with sample data two. So I've set it up as files.path, um, set all the path up to where the data is. And what we can do is to straight away load the data using read underscore CSV. And now on the left, you would have seen that um, the data has been loaded. So let's get a rough idea of how our data looks like in R. So I want you to type skim and parentheses DF. DF stands for data frame, short, um, uh, it's a conventional naming for your data that you are working with. So once you have done that, click run current chunk to look at how the data looks like. So you will be able to see um, two different kinds of data. One is a character, which are alphabets, which contain alphabets. And the other one is numeric, which are numbers. So there are two character variables so the country or region so which country the, um is the i this is this data point and which continent they are from so we have six continents and 156 countries 
And then we have the overall rank, score, GDP, social support, and so on and so forth. These are the numeric variables or doubles. And then we also have the histogram. You can see the distribution of, it, of our data over here. And we can have, look at the mean, BSD, and the quantiles of the data, quartiles, quantiles. So let's go straight uh, into the functions of digiplot. So like I said earlier, um, digiplot is a powerful visualization tool in R. You can use, it's a consistent underlying gram of graphics. So if there is a structure to how you would draw or, or plot a graph. And you can do a, spe um, specify your graph at a high, higher level uh, with a lot of user-defined functions, user-defined um, intricates of it. So there are many parts to digiplot. We have the data, the static mapping, the geometric objects, facet, uh, and that's optional. Statistical transformations are optional. Coordinate systems are optional. And last of all, themes. Um, if you are very interested in creating your own set of, of colorful or artistic, artistic plots. So the first thing with ggplot is to create the canvas. That's what we do with this. DF, pipe, and ggplot. So what this does is to create the drawing canvas. So I want you to try to use ggplot data equals DF and see how the plot looks like. So I'm going to give you 30 seconds to complete this. Okay, so what you have to do is to copy the line on top on 135 to 141, and then you will get the canvas out. So the canvas is the same as the previous example. That is because um, we are using pipe, so we don't have to actually call the data um, in ggplot. So the next thing we want to do is to add aesthetics which are normally the y and x axis, the position. And sometimes we want to change the shape depending on um, the data. We can also add size in the aesthetics. So these are the, you can say aesthetics or the facade or how the graph looks like. We can add colors to the points or the line itself and change the line width if we are doing we have line plot, line graph, or regression lines, and the line type. So these are the six um, aesthetics that we can edit or change or add. Each jump except only a subset of all aesthetics. So <clears throat> we can set them using AES. AES stands for aesthetics. And what we want to do right now is to set the X and Y axis. So we know we have the framework of our plot. So we know where the x-axis is and the y-axis is. So what's missing here? Uh, we do have data points because we haven't mapped any objects or the geometry objects to the graph yet. So aesthetics are to make the framework while objects are to create the points on the data. So I want you to try to create the aesthetics for your own graph. So we're going to set the x-axis to GDP per capita and y-axis to healthy life expectancy. Uh, important, important thing to note, you have to use the backtick, single backtick, when there are spaces in the variable names. So I'm going to give you about 30 seconds to create the S, um, x and y-axis for your plot.
okay so you can type df and then pipe eg plot and then plus no you don't have to plus you have to put as aesthetics y x equals to backtick gdp per capita y equals to a healthy life expectancy and then you should be able to get your gdp per capita versus healthy life expectancy so once we have our aesthetics set up the basic aesthetics x and y axis we want to add actual mark to the plot for example if you want to add points we can use jump point if you want to add lines, we can use geom underscore line. Box plot, geom underscore box plot. So a plot must have at least one geom, but there is no upper limit. So if you add geom point and geom line, you're going to get a scanner plot plus a line, line plot. So depending on what kind of graph you want to um, plot or what kind of story you want to tell with a graph, you can use these different kinds of plots. Or geometric shapes to create your plot. There is also um, the ggplot cheat sheet in our studio which is located in the resources tab in the workshop web page. I will show you how um, the uh, how the shape looks like. So there are lots of different um, shapes. Blank on curve, you can create curve, jump path, you can create maps if you're looking at geographical, geographical data. Also, area for ge geographical data, and so on and so forth. So this is another page where you can look at for all the information about the geoms. And there are also extensions to um, geoms such, such as DigiBSwarm, DigiRidges. You can take a look at them. So right now we're going to create jump point. Um, so a jump point will create dot or point. So we're going to create scatter plot. So after clicking run chunk, you will get the scatter plot of generosity versus happiness score. So now we already have the data point. So with your GDP versus health, healthy life expectancy, uh, please add jump point to the plot. You can copy from the above graph and just add the jump point below. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to complete this. Okay, so all you have to do is to copy your plot from the above, copy down, and plus jump underscore point. And then you will have your first scatter plot that you've drawn. So this is the basic plot that uh, we have created. So it's enough um, if you are exploring your data. But let's say you want to um, understand the data more, understand um, whether there is, a, there is a relationship or linear relationship between these two variables. Um, we want to add a regression line or jump smooth in this case. So what we can do is to, is to overlay jump smooth with jump point. So we're going to put jump smooth on top of jump point. So right now you can see that there is a line, but it's not straight. Because we have not set the line to a linear, to a line, to the method that we want. So it's now it's a curvy line. So to know what you want to input in the line to make it uh, linear, you can click 
um, just move and click F1, it goes to help. Another method is to copy the function and type it in the console below, question mark, and then the function without the parentheses. So let me give it. So it's gonna go back to jump smooth. It will show you the um, documentation for that function. So these are the arguments, which means these are what we put inside the graph or the function. And we want to go straight to method. So smoothing method, uh, that accepts either null or a character vector, such as LM, JLM, JM. So this will change the, um, the smoothing method, which is changing how the line looks. So we can do that by changing method to LM and we will get a straight line at the end. So this is how you modify some of the um, elements inside the graph using, um, by checking the documentation and adding layers to it. Now I want you to try to add the regression line to your GDP versus healthy life expectancy plot. Also, I want you to remove the confidence interval. So there's a hint for you uh, we can check the SE in the documentation for you to uh, know how to remove the SE. So I'm going to give you 30 seconds to complete this. Okay, so I'm going to copy and paste the plot. To add the regression line, we can add geom underscore smooth. And then to check um, the SE. So SE display confidence interval on smooth. It is true by default, so we can set to false. Set to false, and then we would have removed the the um, confidence interval. But here it's still not it's not um, it's not linear because I forgot to add a method equals to ln. And then you will have your linear um, regression line. All, uh, with the confidence interval removed. So additionally, this is only um, the regression line for GDP per capita predicting healthy life expectancy. But let's say we want to, uh, we have some complicated um, regression model. We can also do that and add it into the regression line. So first we have to create the regression model and then we create the predicted values, which are the predicted y. From the predicted y, we will create the regression line. And then we have to specifically set the data to um, the predicted data frame. Or, yes, the predicted data frame. And then we have to set the aesthetics inside Geom's move itself to um, the, the x-axis will be the same, will be the same, but the y, the y value will be the predicted value instead of the, the y um, value, which is the score. And then we can add method to LM to tell it that we want a linear line. Additionally, if we add color equals to something else or red, the regression line will change color from the default blue to red. You can see now the color is red instead of blue. 
So this is how um, to modify some aspects of each of the geometric objects by using color and adding aesthetics, um, specific aesthetics to each of the geometric shape or object. So um, next thing we want to go through after we've talked about um, scatter plots is to create bar plots or bar graph. But first I want you to try to create a bar plot for continuum versus core using jump bar, position equals dodge, stat equals identity. So what you have to do is use ggplot, um, the, an aesthetics inside ggplot, and instead of right, putting jump point, you will put jump bar. So I will give you 30 seconds to complete this. Okay, so you you will put df ggplot and then put aesthetics inside x equals to continent y equals score and then I would add copy the line on top paste it below. And then you will have your basic um, bar, bar chart. But first, I want to I want you I want you to keep this plot in mind, cause we will do we will look at the plot again later. So right now, I want you to create the mean score for each continent, uh, and you have to use group by and summarize to create a mean score. So I'll give you about thirty seconds to complete this part. So if you were not here yesterday you, uh, and are new to R, you, wouldn't, you might not know how these two work. So let me go through. So first is to take your data frame, group by, you have to group by the continent, and then summarize um, the score. You want to summarize the um, score equals mean, Oh, so we're going to create a new score, call a, a mean score for the, each continent. Okay, um, I want you to notice the smallest or the lowest score is 4.36. The highest score is 7.26, um, Africa and Oceania. So let's look back at the plot that we created. Africa, um, it's four point something, but over here it's more than four and close to six. And the highest supposed to be Oceania, but right now um, Europe has the highest score. So what, what's happening here? Um, there is, so there is a problem with ggplot when you want to plot bar charts. It's not uh, as direct as the other plots. Because for bar chart, if you are using this method, it's gonna create the um, sum or the, yeah, the total score, the sum instead of the mean. So what you have to do is to transform your data into a mean score and then use that to plot your bar chart. So um, for information, it's a best practice here. So it's advisable to summarize your data first before plotting group plots or bar charts. So right now, I want you to create the mean score data 
So the data should be called content score, and then create the bar chart, and then plot the content score on the y-axis and content on the x-axis. So I'll give you one minute to complete this. Okay, so let me go through this quickly. Or we'll copy, we just need this line on top. And then um, summarize content score. And then once we created the group, um, the group summary, we will create the ggplot and add the statics x equals continent, y equals content score. And then we want to add geom bar. Let's copy. all the way down and then right now you have a different plot compared to the first one that we created so this reflects the correct mean score for each continent um, so we have learned about scatter plot and bar charts and a little bit of jump smooth which is regression line the next thing we want to look at is to create a box plot so there are various kind of box plots. We have the standard box plots, which are rectangular. We have Varni plots, which gives us the distribution of the data. And we have jitter box plots, which comes from the BSON package. It's like a beehive. So let's explore a little bit about all these plots and how they look like. So the standard box plot um, gives you the box. And we can add point to look at where the distribution is. But the thing is, we cannot look at the direct distribution uh, as in the histogram, even when we have the points on top. We can speculate that um, it's highest around here and highest here, but we don't really have a clear view of the distribution. So we can use jitter. So it's another kind of um, scatter plot, scatter um, geo point, but instead of having them in um, directly at the at the corresponding x and y axis, we have them jittered around the x and y axis. This is useful if you have a plot like this, or if you are working with um, uh, the y or x axis that has specific number of um, specific numerics, such as one to five, which they follow one, two, three, four, or five. So you might want to look at how many people are in one, two, three, or five. So we can use jump jitter instead of jump point. But here we still can't see the sample distribution. So we can use violin plots used by John violin to look at the distribution. And um, it's like a histogram. But in this case, you wouldn't see the mean such as you have in box plots. So it comes with um, what kind of story you want to tell, uh, what kind of plot you want to show your audience. And then we have a different package called bswarm, which I will show you, uh, which is a mix of violin, violin plot and scatter plot, um, the jump point. So over here, the shape looks like what you will have with the violin plot. So we can overlay 
violin plot and um, this plot to look like, see how they look together. So you will see that the shape um, looks similar. And it's over here, I want you to highlight that um, the order of the aesthetics and the jumps affect the layout of the plot. Right now, we add a violin plot first and then quasi random. So, violin plot is the solid plot here. They will be at the back, while quasi random, which are the dots, will be at the front. So, if you reverse the code, the points will be at the back, like over here. So you're overlaying different layers depending on how you put the um, put your lines of code together. So this is just an example of box plot. We will not go uh, much into detail. So next thing we want to learn is to how to add layers of um, objects to your data. We only have the basic plot. So let's say you want to make colorful plots. You want to look at groups, you want to look at any, um, something else. We can add more aesthetics. So um, previously we have jump point, which is a blank um, jump point and then parentheses blank. But right now we are adding color to continent. So if you are going to guess, it's going to add color to the point and each color will be equivalent to the continent the point belongs to. So previously uh, we have six continents, so we will be able to see six different colors here. So you will see one, two, three, four, five, six. And then the regression line for the entire graph. But over here, um, the colors belong, um, the colors are different according to the continent. But if you want all the colors of the point to be the same, we can add color to outside the aesthetics. Because inside the aesthetics, we are mapping the colors to the X and the Y axis or the other objects. But if you want to apply these aesthetics to the overall appearance, such as you want to apply color to overall graph, we can add color outside the aesthetics in the general geom object. So over here, the entire graph for the points, they will be red in color. Now you can try and set the points to different colors of the, of, to different amounts of social support to your GDP versus healthy life expectancy plot. So I will give you a minute to complete this. Okay, so let me go copy. Okay, it's all the way at the top. So we have our GDP and oops, wrong side. So jump point. We want to add um, to different amounts of social support, set the colors to different amount of social support. So it's supposed to be inside aesthetics, color equals social support.
And then you will see the different colors are um, corresponding to the different amounts of social support in the graph. Let me create a new document to put my plot in so I don't have to scroll up. So there we go. So um, depending on what kind of um, analysis you're looking at, maybe this makes sense, maybe this doesn't. So if this makes sense, you might want to look at the interaction between three variables. If not, you can just leave it aside. And you'll be able to, um, this tells a story about how social support impacts the relationship between GDP per capita and healthy life expectancy. So you can see like the uh, more social support, the relationship between GDP per capita and healthy life expectancy, they are higher. So it's kind of moderating a little bit. Um, also, other than this color, we can change the size of the jumps. So we can increase the size using jump point and then size equals something. So this applies to the overall graph. So if I set jump point to uh, the size in jump point to six, all the points in all the dots in my plot is going to be bigger. We can also change the size of this line to what? Um, whatever size you like. So right now, compared to the graph we have on top, this graph looks um, much bigger. The points looks bigger, the lines looks bigger. So I want you to play around with the size of the group bar chart. So add colors to continent uh, in the bar chart and change the size of the bars. So in bar plot, bar chart, you have to use the width instead of size. So I'll give you a minute to do this. Okay, so you can copy from the code above to get the bar, um, jump bar. And then what we want to do is to add aesthetics to jump bar. So we have the colors. Um, color, I'm gonna set the continent. We have position, we have stat, and something else we want to change the size. Uh, let, let me set it at 15. So right now you, we have changed the size, but it looks ugly because the width is too big. And let me set it at two. So you can explore a little bit on how um, what size of the graph you like. It's too big, so I'm going to set it by 0 0.5. So let, let me just set it here. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the color. Because here we are, we are not coloring the graph, we are coloring the border. So that's what um, with bar chart, you have to use fill instead of color. Because colors are for the borders or the outside colors, while fill uh, for the inside colors. So normally if you want to plot something and change the color, you would use fill instead of color. So here's an example of um, the correct um, method of changing the color of the plot. So right now we changed from color to fill and then the border becomes black. So that's the um, default. 
and then we have each continent each continent has its own color because we set to aesthetics so when you use size in Jamba, we are actually changing the size of the border rather than um, size of the, sh the bar. So if you notice, I set size to five, then you see the border becomes big while the um, width becomes small. So if I would change the size to two, it becomes um, less thick, but thicker than the one we have above. So next thing we want to know or to learn are the shapes, different shapes or points we can use to identify different groups. It might be useful if you are only allowed black and white graph and your scatter plot um, uh, has to be separating groups with subgroups and you can use colors so we can use points this can be identified with shape or pch if you are using in aesthetics we have to use pch shape applies to the entire graph or plot so over here i am using shape equals to 23 so the entire graph will be change to shape 23 which is a diamond shape and then you will have you will notice that the inner color is empty it's transparent because right now we are setting color to continent so we have the border to continent so if you use fill then you will see that the colors have changed the border is now black, but the inner color becomes the colors of the continent it, re, uh, it corresponds to. So over here, I would like you to try with your GDP versus health life ex healthy life expectancy plot, add different shapes to the continents, and then retain the colors of each continent. So you have to remember the ordering matters here. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to complete this. Okay, so if you copy from your previous line, you have jump point. So what you have to do is uh, retain the colors of each continent, which means you have to use fill. And then for our fill, you have to change to continent. Additionally, we want to add different shapes to the continents, which means it has to be inside aesthetics. So for shapes inside content uh, inside aesthetics, it's PCH instead of shape. So when we run this, we will get different shape, but the um, colors are not changed yet because for these shapes they do not have fill because they are. They are, we start from 1 to 6 and these items um, do not have the um, shape properties, color properties inside um, the, the object. So let's change back to color and then we have the object in different colors. So depending on the shape of the object, you have to use either color or fill. Next thing we want to do, we have the basic tech, um, basic graph. Let me just copy this. Is to add some text. So there is a geom underscore text, but that's very basic. So we, there is a new, as uh, a nice package called GG Repel. So it stands for repulsive labels. 
uh, wonderfully repository labels. It's uh, more advanced than the current digit uh, gem one is called text. So we can, so in, the, in our case here, we want to label these points on the graph. So this corresponds to the different countries. We want to add these points to the graph to where um, the, their specific continent, their specific country in their specific point in the graph. So as usual, we set the jump point everything. The additional thing we set is jump text underscore repel. And if you what if you do not know how to run, um, put it in text repel. Look at the documentation, and see the examples below. So it's always good habit to look at the examples and see how it's being run to understand how the function works and how you will apply them in your own analysis. So I want to label um, my graph with some points. So the label here comes from the data that we have. We're going to pull out the labels from these countries or regions and then map them to our own graph. So these will add labels. And then the labels have colors. So we want to set the gray. We can set it any color we want, but here let's just set the gray. And then the data we want to get the labels from to put into the graph will be um, the points. So we use filter to only extract those labels from here that we want. Because we, uh, we are still set with the data from here. We are still using the same data set. So we have to filter out those labels. So when we run this, that's strange. Okay, so something is wrong. Okay, it's there. So when we run this, right now we have the labels for all the graphs for these different countries above. So maybe you want to only highlight one country, for example, if you want to highlight Myanmar, over here you will just have to write, um, type in Myanmar. And then if you run everything again, you will see that it only highlights Myanmar. So that's how we um, add labels to points in the data. So over here, we have um, the different labels to different continents. If you are interested in each continent, you might want to create subgraphs or subplots. We can do that with facet wrap um, or facet grid. So they are similar. So when we use facet wrap, we are putting um, continent in the columns and dot means uh, we are not putting any, we're not separating it by something else in the row. And then we can also add how many columns how many rows we want the grid to be. So over here, we will have three columns and two rows. And see, you will have three columns and two rows. So I want you to try with your GDP versus healthy life expectancy graph. I want you to facet wrap by continent and, and separate by two rows and three columns. I will give you 30 seconds to complete this part.
Okay, so I can copy the graph from above. And what you only have to do is to add a set underscore rat. And then dot tilde continent. And then rows. Uh, let's see. Is it n rows or n? So n column equals to 2, n row equals to 3. So, okay, there's an error. I forgot the E. And so you will have your graph here. So it still has the um, shape attached to it. I'm going to remove it. So right now you will see the um, edge of the graph. Um, its subplot has its own regression line and its own um, color and own plot. So we can do the same with bar graph. Uh, um, so we can create um, high versus low happiness groups using cuts. We will create them using cuts. And then we will gather the happiness factors into a long data format. And then we create a summary of the score. So what we'll end up is a summary of two factors. We have continent on one end. We have a category, which are the category of the score. If they are higher than the mean, they are in higher category. If they are lower than the mean score, and then they are in a low category. And then we have the factors of happiness factors. And each happiness factor has its own score. And then with that, we can pipe the data into the ggplot and then create a facade grid and add another um, layer of subplot. So we want to add happiness factors versus continents. So you would imagine or you would guess that we have going to have two different um, subplots here. So category on one side, um, the low or high on one side, and the continent on the other side. So I noticed that there is a error here, category, not the happiness factors. So over here you will notice the, um, the labels are messed up, but we will go um, edit that later on. So first I want you to try uh, to create a bar graph. I want you to break the health life expectancy into low and high, gather social support, generosity, and freedom to make life choices into a long format, group and summarize these data into mean scores, plot and facet this data. So you have to use minimum, minus one, mean, and max plus one to create the breaks. If you're not sure, you can copy this entire line and do the edits. I'll give you a minute to complete this. Okay, so I'm going to copy and paste. So category, let's keep it there. We want to cut healthy life expectancy into two categories, low and high. So anything that is below the 
So you can set at zero, but any, we want to set at the minimum. So the minimum to the mean will be one group. And then minimum to mean is one group. Anything that is above the mean to the end of the, the maximum data, the maximum value will be another group. So the low is from mean to mean, minimum to mean, high is from mean to maximum. And now gather these variables they call happiness factors, leave it there. Um, so we want to gather social support, generosity if you have make life choices. Uh, So social support is capital S. Let me check generosity. Capital G. And freedom to make life choices. And then we group by category and continent and happiness factors to summarize the mean score. So we can actually Rename score to, to cut off um, one redundant step. And then we plot it. So, right now, um, what I have above is the data preparation step. And then over here, we are plotting the data. Happiness factors on the x, y are the score. We want to fill the colors of the bar chart with happiness factors and then facade by continent and category. Plot with within input category, object not found, healthy life expectancy not found. Healthy. That's an, I forgot a Y. So right now we have the x and y axis, we have the um, facade, we have all the score that we need. So this is our um, plot that we're going to work with for the rest of the tutorial. So there are also um, st statistical transformation. Um, we can look at the each of them and look at press F1 for each of them to look at uh, what they represent. But I'm not going to go into detail um, because there's a lot of um, intricacies and a lot of um, complexity to these plots. So there's also coordinates that we can change. Uh, for example, if you want to crop your plot, like you will crop a picture, you can use coordinate uh, Cartesian you can flip the coordinates from y to x and x to y and so on and so forth. So right now we are going to flip the axis because the y, the x axis is the, the plot doesn't look great on like in, in, in that uh, with the x axis as the factors. So we're going to add an extra coordinate called underscore flip at the end of the previous graph. So that right now it looks like we have the social support, everything, the factors that are neatly on the new y-axis. So they are not overlapping. The text is not overlapping. So right now we have another problem, um, which is the con um, continent. So they are being um, cropped out by the border. But we will do that later on. So first we want to look at um, adding title or label to the plot. You can add title with GG title. So we can add um, overlay or add another layer called GG title to our coordinate flip. And then you will have the title on top. You will have the title on top of your plot. So so we can modify the title where it plays, where we're going to place it at the end, where we uh, look at the overall appearance of the graph. So we have the basic graph here. 
So once that is set, we want to make it into an object. Earlier I've said that anything in R can, be, can become an object, even the plot can become an object. So this is what we're going to do. This is our set graph um, without the title. We have set the graph that we want. And then we're going to call it fig1. You can call it anything you want. We're going to call it figure one. Maybe that's our first figure. And then once that is done, we can add some elements to that, like the title, labels, changing the um, position of your text, and so on and so forth. So what this gives, what we have over here when we run it, it's going to give you the same as what we have above. So it's going to be the same as the graph above. So I want you to try with your GDP versus healthy life expectancy graph, set this plot as figure two, and then add digit title to the plot. I'll give you 30 seconds to complete this. Okay, um, so I'm going to copy the scatter plot that we have. And then we only need to add, sorry, we have to set it to fig2. And then fig2 plus gg title. And let's call it figure2. GDP versus health, life, healthy life expectancy. And then we will have the graph with the figure, on, um, figure title on top. So right now we can also change the X and Y labels. If we are able to change the title, we can change the X and Y. Also we can merge the title into the labs, um, labels, um, the label function or labs. So that we can change all the labels of X, Y, and title into the same function. So we save a little bit of space. So for your GDP versus health expectancy graph, I want you to set the X axis label as gross domestic product per capita, the full name. Y axis as life expectancy. Title as figure two, healthy GDP versus health life expectancy. So I'll give you 30 seconds to complete this. Okay, so you have already created figure two. All you have to do is to add labs, x equals something, y equals something, and then title equals something. And then um, copy this, paste, paste, and paste it. So right now, you will have the full title, gross domestic product per capita, life expectancy on the Y and the title on top. So right now we have added title, we have added labels. And now we can go into the final step, which is to add some themes to change the appearance of the graph overall. So ggplot supports the notion of themes for adjusting non-data appearance like plot titles, change the color, change the font size, font shape, change the font, um, axis and ledger placement and titles, where you want to put your um, legend on the, on the right, on the bottom, on the top. Same for the title, we can do the same. Background colors for the entire graph, for the plot itself, 
for the content uh, for the legend and everything. So you can look at um, theme, ggplot um, reference theme here that contains a lot of uh, more information on what you can add. But if you want to know um, what are the functions in theme, I can put it here. ggplot to theme, there are many components. You can change the line as um, the elements of the line all the way to the, the text, the line, access line, legends, um, the panel, the plot, the strip, everything, anything in ggplot you see, you can change it. And there are also presets, theme, black and white, gray, minimal, void, light, dark. can explore around with that uh, to get you started with what kind of themes you want to put in the plot. Um, I'm going to use minimal as an example here. So right now, instead of the gray background, which I don't really like personally, right now we have the white background with no um, gray headers. So there are still some things we have to fix. Um, we have no idea what score represents. The um, heaviness factors, there's, a, there's supposed to be a space here. And the facade, the legend has no meaning because we are, um, they are over here as well. Um, also, the axis here, the labels for the continent, they are not right, they are being cropped, and I don't like the colors. So, uh, fixing labels is very easy. We just have to change title to label and then add a thin minimal inside. And then we now have the happiness score, happiness factors, and the um, figure title. So always put themes at the end of your plot. So you always want to apply theme at the last layer. So next thing you have to do is to rotate this axis so that we can read the title. So we can, um, each of the elements inside the theme can uh, represent an element. So a strip represents the strip over here. And it has element text because we are changing the text. So angle equals zero, set the rotation to horizontal. Horizontal is always zero. And we can change the size of the text. So over here, we are going to change this to horizontal and change the size of the text. So this is the strip. So for example, if I change the um, x element, the size of the x element to 20, it's gonna change high and low. Only high and low, because this is the strip that we are changing. Next thing we can do is to remove the legend. So we can add legend position equals to none on top of inside theme to remove the legend. So right now the legend is um, it's gone and I've also added bold to the, the strip text. Yeah, we can also change the font shape to um, a font to other fonts you like. Maybe do like Times New Roman. If you like something else, you can also do that. So we can take a look at element and look at the font um, color inherit blank. This is for rectangle. For text, we can look at a family. It's set to the default, but we can change it if you want. So right now I'm gonna modify the axis. So item four is similar to item three that. So these two items, um, the X and the Y axis, we can change these components by setting the element text. So we have the access values, we have the access title, and we have the legend. So it's kind of, um, it's best practice to separate them into their specific components. So when we have that, um, we've done this. So we change the size of the access values, which are the values of the axis here. 
and the axis title will be the happiness factors and the happiness score. And the strip X and strip Y are the um, continent and the categories. So we have not, we did not change anything much here. We can, and the last thing we are going through, we will go through is to change the colors of the plot. So this is, this is what makes ggplot um, quite fun, especially if you like UX or UI design or research. So aesthetic, aesthetic, aesthetically pleasing graphs makes reviewers like your results or your manuscript better. So to change color, it depends on fill or color. So remember that um, if you use aesthetic equals to fill, and then in themes, we have to change accordingly to fill or color. So in a bar chart, we use fill equals happiness factors. So when we want to change the colors, we have to use scale, fill, manual. If we use color equals to happiness factors, then we have to use scale, color, manual. So I'm, I will set the colors first and then add the colors later on. So these are the RGB colors, the, the hex code for each color. And R has a very nice or neat um, packages for that, which I will go through later, that have different colors, um, different pa um, palettes you can use. So with the example, um, I have the colors that I want to change. So I'm gonna change the fill, which are my happiness factors to a specific color palette. So right now it changed the color into these different colors. So in general, um, to scale the color or change the color, you have to use scale underscore asterisk underscore plus, where asterisk is the jump you want to modify. For example, um, if you use field, will be scale underscore field. If you use color, scale underscore color. And plus will be the modifier. Uh, whether we are setting it manually, whether we are using a preset um, palette, or whether it's a continuous variable that we are changing. So there is also a predefined palette, which is a brewer. There is a brewer, and we can set the palette to different color combinations. So they have set two, which I'm going to show you as an example here. So I've set this to set two. So this color set. So when you're setting colors to your plot, it's also important to know who your audience are. If you are expecting um, people who may be colorblind, you might want to search for more color blind friendly um, palette or colors. Now with all these um, examples, I want you to try for your GDP versus healthy life expectancy graph, use labs, to set your X and Y, X, Y and title, I want you to remove the legend, set the theme to minimal, and change the text size, and both the axis titles, change the colors of the continent. So I'm gonna give you one and a half minutes for, for you to complete this.
Okay, so we'll go through. All right, so GDP versus healthy life expectancies. So we have figure two, which we have created early on. So the first thing we have to do is to use labs to create X and Y and title, done. And then if we want to remove the legend, we have to set it on the theme. So I'm going to copy theme minimal. We have to copy the, you can copy this whole thing, this whole block below. Remove the legend, done. Set the theme to minimal, done. Change the text size and bold the axis title. Axis title should be bold, done. Text size, change, change. Change the color of the continents, um, set, done. So uh, we have our GDP versus healthy life expectancy graph, which is a regression line. And it doesn't have any um, borders or any headers, which are boxed up. So this is an, an example of a plot you might want to create. But you can also have your own um, personalized touch to it. There are also a lot of graphs online. We can, you can search. They have nice templates you can use. So which I will share them over here. There's a ggpubr, useful function to prepare plots for publications. Um, let's just go through a little bit of them. So they have examples on uh, these different kinds of publication ready plot. Uh, if you like this um, theme, you can use this theme. And they also have um, another nice style. It's called Palette, which is a package of palettes of um, different colors. So there are different colors you can use. Um, these are the packages that have been um, in use inside palette here so you can use this as your reference for looking at colors for your plot so you can use this um to get more um information about this package also if you are interested in bbc themes we have the bbc theme um, which is a nice little which, which, has, which have nice colors. So once you have your plot ready, you want to save them. We can use ggsave to, call, to save a plot. So we can also, um, we, so before saving, we have to make it and make the plot into an object. So we have an object here, which is our figure one. We add labels, we add everything, and then we can call it as another object. So this, once you have, you like a graph, you can call it an object, name it, whatever you want. So for here, I call it figure one underscore save. And so when we have our file ready, we can use ggsave, set the file name. So the file name where it's safe, it's gonna be where you put, um, where this plot, uh, where the data is right now, or where this file is right now. So I'm going to set it back to, um, where is it? Hangouts. So it's, it's going to be saved inside here. So fig one underscore save tiff. Um, units, if you are setting specific size for the journal, then you can set it here and set it to whether it's um, mm, inches or centimeters. And also set the DPI, minimum 300 for most publication um, journals. And then once you click save, it's gonna save inside. Let's see, I have no idea where it's. So it's gonna save um, Argosha Master. So it's gonna save inside. Uh, that's strange. I have no idea where it's saved. Um, so let me just take a look. 
choose your plot themes. Assets, code, content, data, not inside here. So I'm going to set um, to a specific folder. In case you have no idea, um, like me, where, where the file is right now, I will set it to the R workshop root directory, which is over here. I'm going to save it. So there is, uh, I can't open the file. Oh, got it. There's a path called image. So it's supposed to be inside handouts, AMG, and then fig one underscore tiff. So when you open it, you can see the file um, that we created for the diagram. And then we can also save it as a PDF. And then it's in PDF format. So I want you to try, I know we're out of time. So I want you to try for your GDP versus healthy life expectancy graph. Set it as an object called fig2 underscore safe. And then I want you to save it as a PDF, JPEG, and TIFF file. So I'll give you a minute to complete this. Okay, so let me go through. So we want to create a fig2 underscore safe. Um, I'm just going to copy the plot that we created. And then we want to save it as a three different formats. So I'll copy fig2 underscore safe. All I have to do is to change the format type PDF to J JPEG. And then change it to if T format. So when, when I'm done with that, I can run the whole block of line. And then you will notice we have fig underscore two, fig two underscore save for three different formats. So there are also other um, I also put other extensions for ggplot uh, for different kinds of plotting. So if you are doing, if you're running analysis with geographical um, geography, you have maps, UG map, you have call plot for combining different plots. You have GG graph if you're working with network theory or graph theory. And you also have GGI graph, which is to make your graph very interactive if you are doing a presentation. So at the end, um, a takeaway for today, um, we have learned how to make basic bar graph. Scatter plot, box plot using ggplot. We learn how to set different subplots using facet, facet, and modify the appearance of a plot with theme, and saving the graph. Most of all, very important um, is to always read the documentation to understand more about a code or a function. I've also added a code template um, to mix for you to um, get used to or to learn so that you can make different kinds of graphs using this template. Also, I will, um, for, for basic plot, these are the things that we've gone through. The title, setting the title, setting um, the facade grid, um, setting the jump bar or jump point, 
or jump underscore anything. And then we learn how to um, create different aesthetics to change the colors using um, scale and fill. And here we only talk a little bit about um, setting the themes. But over here uh, is a nice um, um, template from Henry Wong from Netherlands that um, has a lot of different themes that you can play around with. So once you have done everything, you will want to need the entire document again. So you have the completed um, workbook. So it's going to take a while. Because there's a lot of um, graphs, um, pictures for it to um, create. So there you go, this is the um, completed workbook for today's workshop. Um, so you can see that we have completed with um, the code that you have done with um, today and the examples. So once again, um, thank you for coming to this workshop uh, for these two days. Um, so as a reminder, um, please complete the post survey workshop episode. Sorry, post workshop feedback and survey.